Howdy, 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 and welcome to the Lady Walker Show. I am Lady Walker, and we have a gym dandy of a show in store for you. My guests are niece and cousin to the legendary blues artist, Tommy Johnson, and they are here to share with us the Tommy Johnson Blues Foundation, as well as some up and coming events and more. Welcome to the show, Miss Vera Johnson Collins and Miss Rose Morton. Howdy, howdy, Hi. howdy. How are you all doing? Just great. Well, we talked before we started taping and some interesting story that I have heard about your uncle, Tommy Johnson. That's so right. So tell us a little bit about how did you get involved? Well, before we talk about getting involved and keeping his legacy alive, tell us who, on whose sides of the family are you related to? Okay, Tommy Johnson is my fraternal uncle. He's my father's brother. He come from a musically talented family. I think it was about 16 children in all. Now, some of those didn't live. I think it was about 12 of them or 13 that actually lived, but all of them came from a musically talented family. Okay, and Miss Rose. Well, my father and her father are cousins, or was cousins, and they all played together. They talked about it, but the main one, or the bunny, was Tommy, and Tommy. they talked about him all the time. Okay. And you could look forward to a house full of people, a party, they were just like, the Beverly Hillbillies in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Boss Hog then. Boss because Hall. they they made bootleg, they sold bootleg, and they would take it to town and the people would bound, they slipped and then the police <laughs> found bootleg. and the police found out they had it. They run them back home, but wasn't nobody going to jail. It was all most of it was fun. Okay. Just clean fun. So Tommy was born way back when? 1896. 1896. Yes. And he lived up until what age? 1956. 1956. So he was somewhere like 60 when he 62, passed? I believe. Oh, 62, 60, 60, yeah. And it's so interesting because I think I first heard about Tommy Johnson years ago when someone else, a fellow producer, interview you and that's when I first heard about Tommy Johnson. Right, right. And at that time you were still doing what you were doing now, keeping his legacy alive. Exactly. I was doing a lot of research. It took a lot of research to get to this point. And um I stayed in the background for over ten years just doing research, talking to family members, getting the stories, getting the facts correct because you don't want to present things that are not true to people. Right. You want to be sure that your facts are correct. And was so that's it quite what, a few family members to get that information from? Well, yes, it was because I did a lot of traveling to Chicago, New York, just they were scattered, California, Las Vegas, even been out the country. But um, it took some years to do it because you know, it takes money to travel. Yes, it does. So I had to pick what places I was going to go to every year. And I did according to who was the oldest, of the uh, family members and who was the, the sickest of the family members because I wanted to capture their stories in case, you know, time, you know, took them away. And um, so that's what I did. I gathered the facts and um, this is what we arrived to. Were your daddy able to give you any information? Oh, yes. He gave me a ton of information. I, I remember as being a little girl, um, six and seven years old. We would always have to sneak in out of the cemetery where Tom is buried and where my grandparents are buried because at that time, you know, during the course of um, fire burns and things, the church got burned down in the 70s, but at this time the church was still standing. But they didn't allow, for some reason, the family members was afraid to go back in. They, they didn't have permission to visit the grave site. So my father would take me back there every Sunday. I could look forward to the ice cream cone and going to the cemetery, him talking about Tommy Johnson, his mom, his other brothers and sisters that was buried there in the Warm Spring Cemetery and other people. So in other words, you had to get permission to go visit? From the landowners. Oh, okay, okay, back then, all right. Uh -huh, from the mm -hmm. landowners, this was like, like in 1960, 63, 64. Okay. Uh-huh, this, this was going on in the 1960s. 
is still alive and well. So you remember going to visit your uncle's grave? Great. Yes, as a child. And I also remember the stories because my father uh, major played as well. He was a musician. Uh, Uncle Lee Dell, his oldest brother, was the one that taught Tommy how to play. So, you know, by me being around my father and all of his colleagues that played and sung the blues, I got exposed to a lot of things very early in life when it came to blues. Did you get a chance to learn to play any instruments as well as sing? Blues? Well, I, um, I sung in this high school choir, I sung in the church choir, and I played the piano for just a short while, but my attention wasn't there. I uh, sung in the um, college choir, and up until that point, I had a pretty good voice due to an accident where I, voc I, I injured my vocal cords. I gave up singing, and I gave up playing musical instruments, and I just started doing the research, and I enjoyed doing the research and the history. So I guess you could say that I'm the, I'm the person that um, saw the vision of what Tommy was and what he is. So your daddy much younger than Tommy? Yes, my father was born in uh, 1910. And so he was, he was, you do the math, he was much younger than Tommy. Tommy was next to uh, Uncle Lydia. Uncle Lydia was the oldest. So the whole family, they played instruments, they were inclined to play those instruments and sing. And you said something earlier before we started taping that your grandfather on your father's side of the family, he carved so many different kinds of instruments. Right, he, he, he uh, Grandpa Charles was a carver. He was a, um, a, a preacher. He was a, a farmer. He did all kind of different, he had all kind of different skills is what I would say. And he carved all of their instruments and what they did, you know, they used to have like the little circles and the little medicine mans that come to this town and they would play at these different shows. You know, they, he had them a complete uh, band with his children is, is what it was. He called these instruments for all of his kids and they, had, they made up a band. Okay. Well, Miss Rose, do you, did your father school you in on any of the happenings that was going on during that time? Yes, he did. And there was a lot going on. My father and him used to play in Christmas Parade, like on Saturday when everybody went to town. Yeah, that's because exactly what they said, we going to town. Right, on Saturday, that's when we went to town. <laughs> that's the big day, right? Right, uh-huh. And he always talked about it. my uncles, they taught them how to play. Oh, really? And all the things that were happening back then, and we really had fun, it was fun. Okay, back so then. your family is from Christmas Springs. Springs. Okay. Uh -huh. And Miss Rose, you was too. Right. From Christmas Springs as well. well. Christmas Springs in uh, Hopewell, like Hopewell. down in there. East of Christmas Springs. Mm -hmm. oh, but okay. still Christmas Springs. Okay, right. gotcha. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, well, we are going to come back and talk about what inspired you to keep this legacy alive and talk about some of the challenges that you <laughs> faced in keeping this legacy alive. All right. Beloved, we will be right back. The Tommy Johnson Blues Foundation and its board of directors proudly present the ninth annual Tommy Johnson Blues Festival, November the 1st, 2014 at the Planetarium, 201 East Pascagoula, Jackson, Mississippi, featuring Andre Lee, Larry Milton, Sweet Angel, Blues Man, The Duchess, Teresa McBride, and more. Doors open at 12 p.m. Show starts at 1 p.m. For more information, contact Vera3332 at netscape.net. Vendors welcome. Call 601-212-6088. Then on October the 30th, 2014 at 1 p.m., a highway dedication in Crystal Spring, Mississippi. Then Friday, October the 31st, 2014, a meeting group at the Hampton Inn, 320 Greymont, Jackson, Mississippi. Welcome back, beloved. My guests are Miss Vera Johnson Collins and Miss Rose Morton. They are niece and cousin to the late legendary blues artist singer Tommy Johnson. All right, Ms. Vera and Ms. Rose, now let's talk about the beginning of the foundation. How did all of this come to keep the legacy alive? Because the foundation is 
keeping this legacy alive. So let's start with how the legacy started. Okay. Um, in 2000, well, really before 2005, <clears throat> Rose and I had talked, and we had talked to other family members about, well, I said, well, we need to do something. We got to do something different. We need to start a 501c3 foundation in honor of Tommy Johnson. And that way we can push him through the foundation and let people become aware of who he is and what his contribution are and was and is. So then in 2005, we uh, launched the um, Tommy Johnson Non-for-Profit Blues Foundation and we got approved. So that's how the foundation came about in 2005. And through the foundation, we've been able to accomplish a lot of things. Um, we are in our ninth year as a Tommy Johnson Blues Festival and Celebration. This is our ninth year. So we've been in existence nine years. And we've done a lot of good things. We have a, um, through that we got a Blues Trail Marker in the town of Crystal Springs, which has Tommy Johnson and her father and her uncles on the back of that Blues Trail Marker as well. We was also able to, um, this year, well, well not this year, um, 2012, we was able to move his headstone out of the library that the singer Bonnie Ray paid for some years before, and it has stayed in the library for 13 years. 13 years. So in 2013, we was able to, to, to make that accomplishment, and we was able to get control of the road in the cemetery. So then we, um, we moved the headstone to the cemetery in 2013, and for some unfortunate reason, someone came in and, and um, knocked the headstone down. So that shut down that project of getting the headstone set and getting the cemetery refurbished and reopened where people could come in to visit. We had to shut that down because of all of our material, okay. which was about $7,000 of material that was stolen. And it just shut down the whole project. And um, it shut me down as well because I didn't speak to my husband for over six months. Well, and yes, he was wondering. That is really something for six months. Yes, because I could not understand how anybody could be so cruel after all of the hard work, energy, sleepless nights, you know, tiresome times, the energy that we had put into this. And then it didn't mean anything to someone else, you know, just to come in and knock the headstone down. So I picked myself up, I dusted myself off, and I said, well, okay, that was yesterday, this is today. What are we going to do next? So then I went and I approached Re Representative Gregory Holloway about getting um, the highway named after legendary blues singer Tommy Johnson. And uh, he told me that he would be willing to help in any way that he could, so then I was instructed on what I needed to do, and I followed those instructions. And from those instructions, um, on October the 30th, which is uh, next week, next Thursday, at 1.30, we will be celebrating the dedication of Highway 51 at 27 North Crystal Spring exit through to South Crystal Springs to the Pat Harrison Drive exit as Tommy Johnson Memorial Blues Highway. Great, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about that particular event because it's two events. Is it two or it's it's, it's it's two events. On the 30th, we'll be celebrating the dedication of Highway 51 um, in honor of Tommy Johnson. And then on the 31st, we have our meet and greet at the Hampton Inn on Graymont Avenue is our host and hotel. So we'll meet our guests and we'll just sit around and chit chat, tell stories. And then on Saturday is the big event. Saturday is the ninth annual Tommy Johnson Blues Festival, which will be held right here in the city of Jackson at the Russell C. Davis Planetarium downtown. The doors open like at 12 o'clock and from 12 to 1 we have like an open mic and we're shooting a video. So for those peoples out there that can sing or can play, you have a God gift of talent, we welcome you to our open mic uh, Saturday, uh, November the 1st from 12 to 1. And then at 1 o'clock, it will be our annual festival that starts at 1 o'clock. And on this year's uh, show, we have all Mississippi-grown talent. All right. Well, that's and great. All Mississippi-grown talent. And we have the Duchess, Jerisa McBride. Yes, I'm well aware who Jerisa the Duchess is. Yes, out of Vicksburg, Mississippi. 
We have uh, the blues man, Kyrek Blues. Okay. Uh, from right here in Jackson. And we have um, Larry Milton, uh -huh. born and raised right here in Jackson, Mississippi. And we also have uh, Greg and the uh, Cool Cold Funk Band from uh, right here in Jackson, Miss Greg Pippins. Okay. Greg, Greg Pippins. Pippins. Okay. And um, his band. And we also have Andre Lee. All right. That would be our entertainers for this year's event. Okay, so these great guests, talents on hand. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to get ready to take another break, and we're going to come back and talk just a little bit about some of the uh, pictures that you have on the boards. Very interesting to look at. And, of course, it was during the era of your uncle, Thomas Johnson. Exactly. Yes. All right. All right. Well, we are going to come back and... Continue along this line. Okay. Getting to know who Tommy Johnson was mm -hmm. and keeping his legacy alive. Okay. All right. Beloved, we will be right back. Welcome back. My guests tonight are Miss Vera Johnson Collins, niece of Tommy Johnson, and Miss Rose Morton, Morton, cousin of Tommy Johnson. Okay. We left off with you are going to tell us about this, but before you do that, tell us about how you are now the voice of your uncle, the legendary blues artist, Tommy Johnson. Okay, um, I feel that, I, and at least I know that I am the voice of Tommy Johnson because of the simple fact that Tommy Johnson had laid in an unmarked grave for over 50 years. The only thing was on his grave was a little tin marker. And um, in 2004, I came to Mississippi to take that marker off his grave and to show Marsha Weaver and some other professors from uh, Ole Miss where he was buried. And we made our voyage out to the cemetery and we took the mark off of the grave. And um, I went back to Toledo, Ohio, where I was living at that particular time. And I said, you know, Uncle Tom, I said, this doesn't make any sense for somebody to have laid in a grave for 50 years and not have nothing with their name on it, right. nothing mm -hmm. saying who they are. I said, you know, I'm, about, I'm, I'm gonna get in a hurry and I'm gonna be your voice. I'm gonna be that voice that my father told me when I was just a girl, that you would be the one to tell this story because you're interested in history and you wanna know your people and you're not afraid. So you'll be the one that's gonna be the voice for your uncle. And so it started this crusade uh, with Tommy Johnson. I set out to find out everything and anything that I could find that pertained to Tommy Johnson. And I'm looking at this collage of pictures that I did back in 2004. And I'm, my mind is going back to where it was at that particular time. And what I was trying to do was to give people a feel uh -huh. of a person that was born in 1896, that lived to 1956, and what they had to endure, the pain and the suffering. Can you imagine getting up every morning looking at a cotton field? No. This is your destiny. Every single day is the cotton field. So then um, I got some more pictures and I just started putting those together, where he played at, people that he was connected with to connect this whole collage from, 19, from 1896 to 1956. This is what um, actually went on. And then there's pictures on here of my father playing, pictures of Uncle Liddell playing. And all that my father and his family, his brothers and, and Tommy Johnson had was their voices and their guitars. This is what basically kept them alive because their lives had, had been tried to be stolen so many times. You know, they escaped death, I would say, many and numerous of times, and her father right. and her uncles as well. Mm -hmm. Because you have to realize that this was not a black arena to be playing music and guitars. Black people didn't do that in that, in that era, in the 1920s and the 26th right. and the 1930s. It was some that did it, but it was very few that was numbered. And so this is what they had was just their guitars right. to put out all their frustration and everything. When they got their guitars, it was like they was in heaven, you know, because um, they could really make music. And so this is what set me out 
to be the voice for Tommy Johnson. I wanted to take it to every level and let everybody know that there is a great Tommy Johnson and that he was born in 1896 and that he did accomplish some things. People think that just because he's a musician and he plays the blues that it stopped there, but it didn't. Tommy Johnson and her father, Charlie Taylor, hitchhiked on the train and went down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they built bridges. He was a, he was a supervisor over the bridge builders in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They caught the boat and went over to Cuba and played in Cuba. Right. So his, his, he, I mean, he traveled all over the world um, as far as his music. You know, he didn't get a chance, opportunity to go abroad to play, but his music left the United States. And it went out of the country, but now he's made his way back into the United States. And uh, I looked at uh, some of the licks that they're doing now, some of the young people that does the rapping and singing, they're downloading his beats because they're looking for something different mm -hmm. and unique. They're looking for a different sound. And Tommy Johnson is unique. He was unique well, in everything. Well, tell us about some of his music. I know you got a CV in there, but tell us about some of his music. Okay, well, he recorded his song, Can He Blues on the Victor, Later, Victor Label. And then he has another song, uh, Big Roll Blues. Uh, he has another one, uh, Maggie Camel Blues. His signature song is Big Roll Blues. Can He Blues, the, the, um, the group, can he got their name from his song can he blues they named their group actually can he okay <laughs> and the can he has a lot of stories behind it really <laughs> because there is such a thing as can heat that you can drink and get alcohol oh it it's is it, it, you can it get does. your you can get uh, uh, uh alcohol out of it and tommy johnson was known to do that and this song came from that can heat from that can the sterile. Mm -hmm. Yes, how about that? That's creative. Yes, we get yes. Song from that can. That's mm -hmm. right. He did a song from the can. Wow. So that's what has sent me on being this voice, this voice of this man, Tommy Johnson. Someone I never met, but someone I feel so deeply connected to, simply because I can I feel his spirit all in me. You know, and to be that close to someone that you never knew. I know that is something there. <laughs> well, look, now the grave site, people can come out to visit or they, how does that go? Okay, well, after they um, knocked the headstone down and stole our supplies, that put our project on hold for that okay. year. So what we're in the process of doing now is we are soliciting help from the community, from people that have people buried in this cemetery. If you have someone buried in the Warm Springs Cemetery in Crystal Springs, Mississippi, they can feel free to contact me day or night. My number is on the website, TommyJohnsonBlues.com. My number is 601-212-6088. They can contact me. We're in the process of taking bids for the cemetery to, um, to see you know, which bid would be feasible and we're in the process of writing grants okay. to get it reopened because as of now, it's not open. After this happened, mm -hmm. I felt like we should lock it up and shut it down so that none of the other graves in the cemetery would right. be disturbed. Oh, well that was great. And so oh. um, we got to have a road built. So we're soliciting uh, MDOT and the different uh, asphalt companies you know, to donate. Exactly. Donate, do, do, donate your equipment, do, donate some asphalt, donate something because it's for a worthy cause. Mm -hmm. This cemetery dates back 300 years. And I think this is the only cemetery in the state of Mississippi that is this old. Wow, well that's interesting. Well, we got to take another break and we are going to come back and let you hear about that, the up and coming events <laughs> so that the audience, if they are interested in attending and as well as donating, they can be able to do that. Okay. All right, beloved, we will be right back. Welcome back, beloved. My guests are Vera Johnson Collins and Rose Martin, kinfolks to the trailblazer of blues, Tommy Johnson. Okay, give out that information again, the upcoming events. Okay. 
October the 30th, we will have the road dedication of Highway 51 being named Tommy Johnson Memorial Blues Highway, and that's on the Senate Bill 2501 that was passed through the legislature back in March. And then on Friday the 31st, we will have our meet and greet at the, Ham at the Hampton Inn on Graymont Avenue. Uh, and then on Saturday is the big ninth annual Tommy Johnson Blues Festival at the Planetarium downtown, the Russell C. Davis Planetarium downtown. Uh, doors open at 12 o'clock. The show starts at 1 o'clock. Tickets are $15. If you want to come in and make a donation, we would gladly accept that. And we just appreciate you having us on your show, Lady Walker, today. Oh, well, the pleasure is all mine. Now, what's next for the Tommy Johnson uh, Blues Foundation? Well, what's next for the Tommy Johnson Blues Foundation is we're going to be getting prepared for our 10th year next year. And we're hoping and praying that everything goes like we planned for it to go. We were hoping that we would have the cemetery open, have a new headstone placed on Tommy Johnson gravesite, and celebrate the 10th year, celebrating the life and legacy of uh, Tommy Johnson. All right. Well, I appreciate being educated on your uncle and your cousin. Thank you. And anytime you want to come back, Mark, me caso is su casa. Well, all right. All <laughs> Thank right. you, Kelsey and Sukas. Anytime you want to come back and just Thank continue you so to much. educate us on your uncle as well as your cousin. And one Thank other thing you. I would like to say, too, is that we're getting ready to launch a network of books. Okay. Miss Martin is writing and I'm writing. So that's going to be one of our big things for 2010. We're hoping to have one of our books ready to go off, to come off the press and do a book sign. Okay, well great, I look forward to that. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. thanks for Trill for coming out. Once okay. again, educating us on your kinfolk. <laughs> All right, All right. All beloved, right. thanks to Trill for tuning in as well. And I will see you next time on The Lady Walker Show. Ta-ta.